Welcome to the Inner Peace and Other Cool Shit podcast, the show that helps you find freedom from anxiety, overthinking, worry, and stress. I'm Siobhan Friel, a fellow human being, transformational coach, and your new friend. Come and hang out with me as we explore a whole new understanding of the human experience so you can enjoy life with more peace and ease. Hello. Yay. Welcome back to the show. I'm really glad that you're here for this one. Today we're talking about moods (laughs) and how they are so ridiculously, ludicrously, staggeringly, astonishingly normal. So two things I want to let you know. Number one, you may find this episode way more helpful if you've listened to the first three episodes of the podcast. In these episodes, we talk about the inside out nature of the human experience and where our thoughts and feelings come from and what they really mean. Uh, So if you want to go and do that, I'll be right here waiting, digitally speaking. The second thing I want to let you know is that there's a very small chance that you may hear some faint meowing in the background. Don't worry, it's just a cat. (laughs) I feel particularly well placed to talk about moods today as I have just had a monster of a mood as some of my friends could easily testify. (laughs) Because that's the thing, it doesn't matter how much you know about the nature of thought and feelings and the human experience, we all get moods from time to time. Now, what I'm calling moods in this episode is another word for um, state of mind, and I'm referring to our general feeling, I guess, our general state. As I say often, the specific words and meanings and labels that we give to things doesn't matter. The cool shit is found in looking toward the thing, in this case moods, not trying to define it against other things. In saying that, clients will ask me, well, what's the difference between a feeling and a mood? And my first thought is, ooh, there goes a brain wanting to label stuff and match it up with things and clarify meaning and tidy it neatly away into a framework. And my second thought is often, Siobhan, you asked this exact question at first. And then my actual answer to them is normally something like, it doesn't really matter. There is no fundamental difference between a mood and a feeling as it's all just a human experiencing life through one energy. (laughs) Then if I get some blank or annoyed looks, I'll say something like, well, it kind of looks to me that a mood is a general overarching state of mind and a feeling is more specific and nuanced. So um, a mood is red and a feeling is burgundy (laughs) is that a shade of red or a mood is lunch and a feeling is some falafel if you happen to be having falafel for lunch or a mood is clothes and your feeling is a (laughs) t-shirt I hope you can understand what I mean by those silly examples but it doesn't really matter anyway because it is all the same thing it's all the same energy that us humans just seem to want to slice and dice and label something a feeling and something a mood and something something else the important thing is not figuring out if you are having a mood or feeling a feeling the important thing is looking towards the nature of the human experience I love to keep it simple with clients and also with myself. So I just kind of call moods like a high mood or a low mood. And that's if we even need to label them at all. Me and one of my good friends talk about moods as ebb and flow. I'm ebbing today. I'm flowing today, we'll say to each other. I love this because it recognises that just like tides, we're always on the move and it's all part of the natural order of the world. Everything in nature is always moving, always changing, and us humans are nature too. I can't help but notice that I said a minute or two ago that the labels and words aren't important and then I proceeded to talk about extra labels and words. (laughs) Sorry about that. Okay, so back to moods then. Why are we even talking about moods? Like, so what? Well, as with a few other things that I've mentioned over the episodes so far, our misunderstanding about what a mood is and what it means is causing a lot of misery to us humans. 
our misunderstanding about our experience in general, like thought, feeling, mood, state of mind, etc., and what it means to be human is causing us pain completely innocently. It's my mission to shine a light on these misunderstandings so that we can all have a nicer time roaming around the planet. So when we are in a mood, life feels kind of rubbish. Things seem dull. Life feels like a grind. We're easily irritated. We're impatient with ourselves and others. We may tart and roll our eyes a lot. We don't laugh. Everything seems serious. Our inner commentary, our brain being a brain, chats in absolutes. Always this and never that. Things are only black and white and in this case black. Things we find joyful at other times become burdensome or annoying like kids or partners or pets or spin classes. All of the above was just my perception and opinion of what a low mood feels like to me but I think you can all relate to that even if your experience is different. So a low mood isn't nice, sure, but we innocently pile on extra suffering through a misunderstanding of what moods are or what they mean. It looks to me like this misunderstanding shows up in a couple of ways. So one is that we feel this way, like in a mood, the way I just described above, and we don't know it's a low mood. We think it's just the way life is. We think life is just crap. We are mood blind. We are wearing sunglasses indoors, metaphorically speaking. Everything is darker and duller and rubbisher, which is definitely a word. We have our mood glasses on, but we don't realise that we're wearing glasses. We think this is just the way it is. Another way we innocently experience extra suffering from our moods is that we know that we are in a low mood or a low state of mind, but we believe it's caused by an outside thing. So we know we are ebbing and not flowing. We know we have our dark glasses on, but we think the dark glasses are justified because of a thing in the outside world. So maybe we just lost a job or a relationship or someone did something to us, some kind of perceived injustice. Maybe it's the events in the world which always seem enough to justify feeling rubbish. When the thing that we think is causing the mood changes, we'll feel better again, we think. And it sure looks this way sometimes, but when we notice that we feel rubbish without a reason, we'll go looking for the reason. And if you look for a reason for being in a mood, from a low mood, you will find plenty of reasons. Another way we innocently cause extra suffering for ourselves by misunderstanding what a mood is or what it means is knowing that a low mood is thought created and it's the energy of life doing its thing, but we think that the frequency or intensity of the low mood means that we are broken, fucked up or just different from others in a bad way. Now, I don't normally like to play favourites when it comes to the misunderstandings of the human experience which cause intense suffering, (laughs) but this one has a special place in my heart, maybe because it seems to me like it's the most insidious, so seeing through it is amazing. So I experienced this a lot when I was first getting into this stuff that we talk about on the show. I was experiencing huge shifts in my perception of life and many cool insights into being human. But whenever I was in a low mood, I thought I'd gotten it all wrong or I was wrong or it didn't work for me because I was truly broken and all of that. It's no wonder that we think moods are something to be fixed or avoided or reviled when we think that they mean that something is wrong out there in the world and it's up to us to sort it or that we're broken in some way or fucked up for having these moods. And that's even if we know it's a mood at all, and sometimes it just seems like life, like the first one that I talked about. Okay, well, what are moods then, Siobhan? (laughs) Well, moods are just the fluctuation of energy. Our moods go up and down constantly. They are a completely normal feature of being a human being. We don't realise how normal they are because many of us are used to putting on our outside faces when we're in a low mood and that's why it often looks like we're the only ones suffering with frequent low moods. Everyone else seems to be okay. That's their outside face. So a mood is simply a continuous fluctuation in the quality of our thinking. 
Moods are completely impersonal. They mean absolutely nothing about your life or you as a person or any of that. And hilariously, paradoxically, when we are in a low mood, we don't believe any of this. A mood, like anything in life, is energy passing through. Life moving through, the universe moving through in its infinite stream of moving throughness. <laughs> And it's brought to our awareness via thought. And what I mean by brought to our awareness via thought is that you only have a mood when you think you have a mood. Now, please don't misunderstand me there. Like moods are something we control with our thoughts. I don't mean that at all. I mean that anything you're experiencing in any moment is because you are thinking about it, consciously or not, and purposefully or not. Like, for example, have you ever had the experience of being in a mood and then someone um, on the street asks for directions or something and you earnestly try and help them? Or maybe <laughs> or maybe you tell them to go away because your mood is really bad. Um, but let's say you, you help them. So you temporarily and without controlling any of this, you forget your mood because your thoughts are on the other person and your thoughts are on trying to remember the road names of places nearby that you want to give them as part of the directions, okay? And then when they totter off full of thanks for the help from the kind stranger, which is you, you remember that you were in a mood. So it comes back because you were thinking about it again. But where did the mood go when you were talking to that person? Can you see what I mean here? My favourite way to talk about moods and thoughts and feelings and our human experience is using the metaphor of the weather. It's particularly useful for me because I live in New Zealand where one can experience four seasons in one day. <laughs> also, the tourist board tell us in their ad campaigns urging people not to go hiking in the wilderness wearing flip-flops or as the Kiwis would say, not to go tramping in jandals. Isn't tramping a great word for hiking by the way? So our moods, our thoughts, our feelings, our experience of life is psychological weather. Like the weather, we can't control our psychological experience. Like the weather, we have our preferences. Like the weather, our psychological experience comes and goes. Like the weather, our psychological experience is always changing. Like the weather, our psychological experience can change very quickly and other times it seems like the same weather has been hanging around for days or weeks or even months. Our well-being, our innate peace and clarity and calm and all of that good shit is the blue sky in this weather metaphor. The peace, calm and clarity is untouched by the weather. The sky is untouched by the weather. The blue sky is always there, always, but we don't always see it and that's totally okay. Whatever the weather does has no effect on the blue sky. So last year I took a trip to a region in New Zealand called Taranaki, which has an enormous volcano called Mount Taranaki. <laughs> it was pretty cloudy when I got there and I was like, where's this bloody famous volcano then? My Airbnb was supposed to have views of Mount Taranaki, but it didn't, and I felt a bit cheated. Well, the next morning, I opened the curtains, and there it was. It was enormous and absolutely, gorgeously, beautifully majestic. It was right there, this huge volcano, outside my window. The day before, it had been obscured by the clouds, but today the clouds had cleared, and I just couldn't miss it. So Mount Taranaki is like our innate well-being. I know I just said that the blue skies are innate well-being, so just pick which you prefer. <laughs> the point is the same. Our innate well-being, our inner peace, is always, always, always there. But sometimes, maybe often, it's obscured by the clouds, which is our psychological weather. It blew my mind how something so gigantic as Mount Taranaki couldn't be seen when it was cloudy. It was just gone. It looked like it wasn't there. And that's our psychological weather. Our low mood cloud obscuring our peace volcano. <laughs> low moods can't be changed, fixed, managed or solved. Sorry. <laughs> 
but they don't need to be. The only thing to do in a low mood is know you're in a low mood, understand what a low mood is. It's temporary, changeable, impersonal, meaningless, psychological weather. Temporary, changeable, impersonal, meaningless clouds obscuring your volcano of peace. (laughs) And as with any bad feeling, which I've said multiple times already on the podcast, we know not to listen to the content of our thinking when feeling bad. So if moods are indeed just psychological weather, managing them or trying to soothe them or change them would be like trying to change the actual weather or to really stretch the weather metaphor. Doing something to solve for or fix our low mood would be like buying some enormous industrial sized garden heaters to dry the ground when it's raining or something like that. (laughs) Because the rain stops on its own and the ground dries on its own. And the best thing, it doesn't actually matter if the ground is wet. Okay, maybe done the weather metaphor to death now. When we see moods in a fresh way and we see their variable energy and constant fluctuations, when we see that they don't mean anything and we don't need to do anything, they're nothing about us or our life, then there's no need to change them. Are you with me? Then, when we see that they can't be changed and nor do they need to be changed, they tend to move through a lot more quickly. When we aren't innocently but mistakenly attaching a ton of meaning to a low mood or taking our low mood thoughts seriously, like how shit we are or how shit other people are or how shit our lives are, the mood's going to move on through. Moods just don't bother us as much when we really come to see that they're not a big deal. Like, why fix something which is temporary and meaningless? Knowing that a low mood is the weather and knowing the changeable, impersonal, variable nature of weather does not mean that we will not get wet when it rains. God, I'm really... (laughs) I'm really pushing this weather thing, aren't I? I hope you're still with me. But what I mean by that is we will still feel it. A low mood will still feel unpleasant, but even that sense of unpleasantness kind of eases over time. The best way to get a feel for this is to have lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of moods, which I've been doing (laughs) over the last few years. So the more you see the mood coming and going, the more we trust in its impersonal and variable nature. We don't have to like our low mood. We only need to know it's a low mood. Do you see? Okay, well, how to explore this for yourself then? As with anything else that we've been talking about on the podcast, consider that there's something to this new way of looking at our human experience. So put on hold what you think you know about what moods are and what they mean and all of that and take a fresh look. The next time you're in a low mood, and you probably won't have to wait too long if you're a human being. Firstly, know that you're in a low mood. That it's just a mood, it's not your life. Then, as best you can, disregard the unhelpful content of your thinking in a low mood. If there truly is a problem to be solved, it will still be waiting for you when your mood lifts, so don't worry that you're going to miss anything. (laughs) I mean this very lightly, so don't get to work examining moods and all of that. Just kind of lightly notice, but be on the lookout for what I sometimes call (laughs) meta mood thoughts, which are thoughts from a low mood saying, this is not a low mood, it's real and you are rubbish and everything is shit. These meta mood thoughts come to be quite funny. Not at first, they seem really real like most thoughts do. But when you come to see that these meta mood thoughts are like the theme song to a mood, it really helps you see them differently and not take them too seriously. Next time life is looking really rubbish or you're feeling flat, unmotivated, a bit stuck, plain old grumpy or irritated, just consider that this is a completely normal, completely harmless fluctuation of energy. That's all it's just your psychological weather. Maybe it's your least preferred weather, but it's weather all the same. 
So Anxious Alice has been following along with us so far on the show. She's getting curious about the nature of anxiety and it's starting to seem a bit different to her. It looks a bit less personal. It definitely doesn't look like a disorder or a disease that she has. It looks a bit more like the regular ups and downs of a chattering human mind. Alice still experiences what we would probably call anxiety, but something feels different to her. It feels like there might be something to this whole thing that we're talking about, something different about what anxiety even means and maybe it's a lot simpler and her feeling of anxiety is only telling her she's got a ton of thinking and all of that stuff that we've been discussing on the show already. And then Alice wakes one day and feels grumpy and pissed off. She thinks this whole thing is rubbish. She thinks the podcast sucks, she sucks, the world sucks. Even the leaves on her favourite houseplants seem less shiny. Plants suck too, Alice thinks. Any insight or softening that she's had around the nature of thoughts and feelings seems very far away or nebulous or just Pollyanna to Alice now. Alice is in a low mood. Yay! Perfect timing, Alice. But Alice does not think that she's in a low mood at all. She thinks that everything is just rubbish and shit. What would you say to Alice when she's like this? <laughs> well, probably nothing because you'll bite your head off. Now, Alice will flow out of her mood, maybe today, maybe tomorrow, maybe next week. She won't need to do anything about it. It's just the normal fluctuation of the energy of life running through her. When she pops out of her mood, Alice is kind of startled. She sees only now once she's out of the mood that she was in a mood in the first place. Alice decides that the next time she thinks that her houseplants suck, she'll take that as her clue that she's in a mood and she needn't take the way life looks from that place so seriously. Okay, here's the main point that I'd love you to take away from this episode. Moods are normal, ridiculously common, always on the move, totally impersonal, all part of being a human, they don't mean anything and they can still feel really rubbish and that's okay. They'll start to feel less rubbish over time as we see more around this kind of stuff like how the human experience works, how thoughts and feelings are always on the move and all that kind of thing. Feeling rubbish when you're in a low mood is a good thing because that's your reminder that you are just in a low mood. Just that. That's all that's happening. That bad feeling is letting you know that. It's just a mood. It's not life. Knowing that you're in a low mood is the only thing you need to know or do in a low mood. It will move on on its own and the more you can lightly explore that yourself and see that there's nothing wrong here. It's just a mood. The easier time you'll have in the bad weather. You made it all the way to the end, yay. I'm finished talking about moods now. Thanks for listening and see you next time. Thank you so much for listening. This is the part where I ask you to share, review and subscribe to the show. So if you go and do that, I would absolutely love it. If you have thoughts or questions or insights about this episode or anything really, come and share them with me on Instagram at Siobhan Freel or visit me at siobhanfreel.com. See you next time.